I remember once counting the number of side roads that a, a, a killer could drive off to dispose of a body in an hour, and there were, you know, a hundred and or more. It'd be very easy to, to dispose of somebody and, and very difficult to find them. It's a perfect place to go missing forever. Ray Mahalko is trying to solve the murders along BC's infamous Highway of Tears. Ray used to be an RCMP officer, but after nine years, he left the force to work on his own. Now he's a private investigator, but nobody's paying him to look into these cases. He just can't help it. I'm disappointed that some of these cases haven't been solved. I'm stubborn. Uh, I'm not a quitter. and. You know, I like to help people. On this day, Ray takes me back to the very beginning, to the spot where he first started his investigation 10 years ago, this abandoned elementary school in Prince George. So what do you, you come here and what, what, what do you think about? Well, this is where my first theory uh, started because um, Leah Germain's body was found dumped behind the school. It seems like a bizarre place to leave somebody if you're just driving down the highway like a stranger. So I, I'm still convinced that, that whoever was responsible is familiar with this area. So that's Ray's working theory. The killer lived somewhere very close to here. Would you show me? Can we walk? Sure. It's terrible to imagine that this is the place where Leah Germain just a kid, 15 years old, was left after she was stabbed to death. That was December 1994. How she ended up in this field is one of the things that Ray has spent years trying to figure out. He now thinks Leah's case is linked to another murdered young woman, 15-year-old Roxanne Tiara. You know, both were murdered. Both were, were in, involved in drugs and prostitution. Both had said that they wanted to get out of it and, and clean up their act. So what does it make you wonder? Well, it makes me wonder if the people responsible for running that business, like they're using pimps. them like their pimps, had something to do with it. Do you know who the pimp was in those days? I, you know, I don't. Um, right. I'm attempting to find that out, actually. Of course, that's easier said than done. Remember, these murders happened more than 20 years ago. The other challenge is that Ray lives in Vancouver. To investigate, he has to travel north, almost 800 kilometers. And he does this every chance he gets. Have you got a minute? Ray believes the murders can be solved with what he calls old-fashioned police work, talking to as many people as he can until somebody gives up a clue. Excuse me. We've agreed to conceal the name of the person Ray's looking for. I'm that PI that's looking into the women, missing women, and I'm trying to find a guy by the name of Never heard of him. Never heard of him? I'm oh, trying to God. find a guy by the name of You ever heard of him? Yeah? I know him, but I haven't seen him. You know, how about I give you a card? If you see him, you can tell him the phone. Sure. Yeah. Ray figures he's worked a year, full time, on these cases. So it's no wonder he's attracted the attention of the RCMP, the police force he used to work for. The RCMP are very territorial, and, and I'm sticking my nose in what they see as their business. I would have felt the same back in the day myself. What do you think they want you to do? Go home and forget about it. Okay. I'm trying to find a, uh, a guy by the name of, of... He would have been around here for quite a while. Uh, no, I don't want him work for you. I have no idea. But I know, I know. I'm you really... got my card if he... Here's the thing I can't stop thinking about as I follow Ray around Prince George. He doesn't have the protection of a badge. He's all alone. And these are murders he's trying to solve. Ray's sticking his neck out. I know many of the times I'm up here working, I'm out alone where exactly nobody knows. So if I go missing, that, that's it, I'm gone as well. So I'm, I'm very careful about where I go and what time of night and who's around me and is anybody following me back to my motel and, and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to find a guy by the name of You know him? Uh, no, I don't. No? Well, keep my card. If you happen to hear of him, maybe he could call me. Oh, okay. 
Okay. You could call me. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank Sometimes you. it has to feel almost pointless. Of the 18 missing or murdered women linked to the Highway of Tears, only one single case has ever been solved. Most families still search for answers, and so does Ray. For instance, the murder of Ramona Wilson is one that Ray worked hard on but was never able to crack. Over the years, he's grown close to Ramona's sister, Brenda. Hey. Hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> Long time no see. <laughs> you guys still hear from the police at all? or? They are still say they're on the case, so, and they're still investigating, but if there's no leads, then it's pretty much not a priority, so it, it's disheartening to the families. The RCMP also investigated Ramona Wilson's murder. In fact, 10 years ago, they started a task force to see if there's a serial killer operating on the Highway of Tears. Multi-million dollar budget, 70 dedicated officers. With almost no results, it's now been cut to the bone. They called me, they said we can no longer move forward with Ramona's case. I just remember crying all the way there because it was just like, how could you do this like over the phone? Like you can even come to me in person and tell me this. I mean, I still believe there's people out there that know something. It's yeah. just getting them to, to come forward is a big problem. Forward and, you know, trying to find hope in. The police have said that Ramona's not a priority. So is, is Ray your last hope then? Ray's been a really good, you know, friend to us and has inspired us in some different ways when, when we did feel hopeless. You know, when we, we figured there was no hope, that no one's out there to help us anymore. But he all seems to show up when we, you know, when we feel that way and it's been good. Hopefully something will happen that, that's good news. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm gonna uh, take off. Okay, thank you, Ray. Take care. I try to stay focused and look at this from the point of a, a view of an investigator. And that's not to get emotionally involved and just to try to follow the leads. But in the end, it does affect your heart. Well, sure it does. It, it, it can't help, um, you know, and you can't shut out everything else that's going on. So, so it, it does affect you. It's because Ray cares so much about these cases that he's right back at it. And good thing too, because in the end he gets something, a possible lead. Your cousin. Is it your cousin? You got a phone number for him? Can I give you my card and maybe you could ask him to call me? I did learn some things today. I think it went well. What'd you learn? I don't want to say, I, I, but I have. I've learned some things which in the future are gonna help me. You know. It could be that Ray will never figure out what happened here, but his investigations are also a reminder. There are hundreds of cases of missing or murdered Indigenous women across the country that need to be solved. Nick Purden, CBC News, Prince George, British Columbia.